Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees uh, podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined by Alkas Yanu, uh, who, Alkas, you are our first guest from New Zealand. So I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you on, on, on the show. Great to be here. Yeah. So um, can you can you share a little bit, introduce yourself to the to the audience, please? Yes, uh, I'm the Chief Executive of the New Zealand Accredited uh, Adoption Agency uh, called Compassion for Orphans, and we help to facilitate the adoption of children from countries from outside New Zealand into New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand is not what they call a sending country. We, uh, we don't send children out to be adopted, but we do receive um, children from countries who are um, a signatories to the Hague Convention. And um, we'll get into your story in a little, uh, a, a little while. But then the, the next question I'd like to ask you, if it's okay, Alcas, is what um, what comes to, to your mind when I say these words, uh, thriving adoptees? What does that mean to you? What that means to me is that every child's got the right to grow up in a loving family. And we try and facilitate that so the children can reach their full potential. Yeah. Fantastic. And can you tell me a little bit about um, uh, your your story and how you, how you came, you know, how the how the personal became the professional, and just uh, the stuff that you shared last time when we spoke um, was just super. Yeah, my story started with um, the adoption of a seven-year-old girl from Russia. Um, felt that I had a life was too comfortable. We had room, lots of room in the house for for uh, um, a little person. So I started the journey and uh, yeah, um, and then from there, uh, I learned a lot about the process and uh, wanted to bring more children back. Um, nearly adopted another two children while I was there in Russia, uh -huh. uh, but that, didn't, that fell through. That was kind of a, a, a thing that just happened. Uh, uh, but I thought I could have more effect by helping more children by helping lots of families to adopt children and that led to the beginning of the uh, uh, agency yeah fantastic and, and how long ago was that because how, how old's your daughter now uh she's uh, about 32 33 now wow. i've got two children of her own and um yes yeah, so that, that was back in 1996 and then uh four years after that is when i left uh left my uh, business that i had to set up the agency which uh, i did full-time for three years um, and uh, from from there now uh, we run it with a, a team of people. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, so you're obviously a, a, a very proud dad and now a proud uh, granddad. Yes, yes, yeah. it's a um, it's a lifelong thing when you uh, when you uh, adopt a child, then it's the children that they have, and then it's the children that they have. So it's a it's a lifelong yeah. thing. And uh, we're recording this on on Zoom for the but for the benefit of the listeners. Th this this guy is uh, Alcus is is so uh, young and high energy. He definitely doesn't look anything like a granddad. He does not look since you just do not <laughs> look old enough to be a granddad, my friend. So, so um, yeah. Uh, so thriving adoptees. Um, you talked about helping. Uh, making sure that kids realize their full potential and you know providing this um stable and, and and loving home what 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 for you are the ingredients what you know what is it that help, helps adopted kids do that and realize their potential what what would you like to what have you learned over those uh, those years what we've learned is um we like to prepare families for the lifelong commitment that and uh, we like to uh, give them uh, support so we commit uh, social workers to walk alongside them to if there's any uh, hiccups on the road that they're trained and expert at helping them overcome any issues and help helping with parenting strategies uh, and generally being there for as long as the families need to um, to be successful you know, in, in the integration of the child into the family yeah yeah so w what have you learned um yourself obviously we we're, we're 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 hopping between here for you know alcas as dad and alcas as the as, as the ceo of this uh, adoption agency 
Um, so what is it that you've learned um, uh, personally with your, your, your daughter in terms of what, what, what's helped her, her, her thrive and go on to be um, a, a loving mum of two as well? I think uh, uh, something that's important is to uh, be that stable influence in their, in their lives, to, to be there, to um, help give guidance where you can. Um, a lot of children, um, uh, my daughter was seven when, when she was adopted, uh, a lot of children that age have spent quite a bit of time in an institution. So there's going to be things that have happened in their lives that you don't expect young children to have to go through. And you have to be prepared for what might have happened and uh, get help where you need to get help. Um, and uh, it's, it's that love and commitment you know, to help and to see it, see it through as if that child was born to you. you know? Yeah. yeah. So this is going back a long, long time ago. But um, what what were the challenges that that that, that came up for for your daughter, and um, what did you what did you learn through through those challenges that that um, could help our, our listeners? The uh, some of the difficulties was uh, connection, attachment. You know. Um, it's a different type of attachment to children that are born to you and um, uh, children have been through maybe lots of caregivers and in institution have uh, um, learned not to trust or love because the, the amount of times that they, uh, they've trusted an adult who then left, you know, then they've had a new person and a new person. And that can translate sometimes into that people don't love them. That's why they left, you know, so it takes a long time to, try and build that trust and connection. You know, so, and that comes through commitment and time and, you know, and showing that trust and being a stable force, you know, and um, yeah, there are lot, lots of challenges on the, on the journey. Um, uh, for my daughter, she uh, got her real connection when she had her daughter. She finally had someone in the world that she could connect to. It was a big revelation for me, you know, that was, a, uh, yeah. Yeah. So how did you feel at that point? Uh, it's a journey, you know, it's a, uh, hard to describe it as a, any moment, you know, it's just, it's just the journey that you're on and, you know, you're just seeing things unfold and learning, you know, I learned a lot through that, you know, I was able to uh, mention it to someone else who went through something similar, you know, and yeah, and it was, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I can't say it's any flash light bulb moment. It's just. A, no, no. No, no. What have has have you reflected uh, back on? Have you have, have you discussed this with your your, your daughter um, at, at at length, or you know, is this is this a kind of like a non-issue? So so many years on. I just went on to the next thing of life, you know. After that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because you know it's clear that you know you're um, uh, you're a, you're a, a, a visionary kind of a guy. You just kind of you just move on, don't you? I mean, you just you just move and go go with the life and go with what's you know what's ahead and just keep developing the relationship and keep uh, yeah keep moving. Yeah, because there's lots of other things in life as well. You know, jobs. There's you know what's happening in their job, what's happening in their private lives. You know what's happening. Yeah, what's happening with the kids. You know, there's a whole. Heap of stuff. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. How, how old are your grandkids, Arvid? Uh, 12 and 8, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. 11 and 8, something like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, is your, is your, um, is your daughter a, a full time mum? She's not, she's not going to join you in the agency or anything like that? Or she, does she do anything in the agency? Or? No, no, she's, uh, she's in Auckland. She actually lives in Auckland so, uh, and works in Auckland. So she's uh, quite a distance away. And she, she hasn't expressed any interest in working in the agency. So, yeah, I was just asked, I, I, you know, I went into the, I went into the uh, family, the family business. So, um, I, yeah, yeah, no, no, she, she's, uh, but she, um, uh, I'm an accountant by trade and she, she does some accounting work for me. So how's oh, that? Oh, she's, <laughs> she's followed, she's followed that. So, yeah. <laughs> she's followed that she's picked that up through uh nurture. yeah yeah uh, not uh not, not nature yeah so um 
what what have you learned um, in uh, pr professionally in this? Uh, you, you know, you talked about um, a lifelong commitment. So your social workers, uh, the social workers within the agency, are there for a, with a lifelong commitment to supporting the uh, the adoptive parents and the adoptive families that you work with. What sort of things have you learned from from them? You know, and and how does that because it, it gives it a different slant. You've got your, you've got your 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 own perspective. What you've learned, and you know, being in the thick of it, I'm I'm sensing that you're kind of like a very empowering boss. So you you bring in the experts and you let the experts get on with it. But what, you know, what is it that you've? How do you see these? How do you see these two learnings stacking up, being different? How, how's that shaped? How's that shaped overall for you in terms of? Anything that you feel could help the, the 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 listeners as adoptive parents. A lot of what I learned actually came through uh, pain, and uh, that pain was a failed adoption early on in the uh, in, in our um, agency. And so I did a lot of research into what um, affected successful adoptions, and there were some really key things. The first key thing was a lifelong commitment to assist the families, you know, we had to make a commitment. So I went to our board, uh, so we've got a board of governance, and uh, I said to them, we need, all of us need to make this commitment to the families that we come and work with us, that we will commit to support them, you know, through the whole process. And when the children come into the family, we'll continue that commitment. So they all bought into that. And uh, so that's number one. Secondly, is that um, early intervention is really important. If something crops up in, with the family or something from a child's past or um, uh, things come out, you know, when the children gain a bit of trust, they start sharing what might have happened to them. There might have been some abuse. There might have been, um, you know, a whole heap of things um, had happened. And uh, our social workers are trained to know whether that is just a normal childhood thing, you know, growing up or something to do with adoption. And they will say, we think you need to get specialist advice here. They, they are trained to do that. So they will bring in the specialist themselves. Another thing we learned, you know, through this research is that uh, adoption support has to be inexpensive. And if it's, if it's expensive, people won't use it. So it has to be inexpensive. So we don't charge for the, our social workers time. So uh, occasionally they use, uh, have to use specialists. We know where they can go and get funding. And uh, we also had someone who uh, applied to adopt through us and they, um, they found in the end that they were too old or they discovered that they were too old to adopt. So any money they were gonna spend on the adoption, they said, oh, we'll give it to you if you use it to support families when they need help. So we put it, the money into this account and that's available there, people can apply you know, to get help for their children. Um, uh, and um, yeah, th those, those are the, the key, yeah. key things that we learned to make, you know, successful adoption. Yeah. I, I'm very um, interested in what you said about the, um, uh, the, the social workers being trained to spot what is a children issue and what is an, uh, an adoption issue. Can you, can you share a little bit more about that? Oh, it could be something could be just normal to most kids. It could be um, uh, tantrums. You know, the tan tantrum could be, you know, just a thing that kids do. Uh, another thing could be um, uh, what one of the children that was uh, adopted through us was having night tremors. And it, it transpired that back in the orphanage, they were doing things with ghosts and things at night time. And, you know, and it took a while to extract that from the, the child. You know, and it got to the stage where they needed to bring a psychologist and to help with with that you know now social worker was able to identify that there was a deeper issue than just a you know a kid having a nightmare you know something back you know in, into their past yeah so that it's th things like that it could be you know any abuse they might have suffered and they need you know, intervention for that yeah because I, I mean i i saying that um I saw something on Facebook this morning in a, an adult adoptee 
um, in a Facebook group for adults and adoptees, uh, having a um, having a rant about something that her, you know, that her husband had said to her, uh, and the husband had made it about adoption, um, and I I think it's a very well, I, I refer to this in colloquial terms as pinning the tail on the wrong donkey. You know, mm-hmm. we kind of like we've got we've got this we've got these pair of glasses. We're both we've both got actually very similar glasses, aren't we? <laughs> um, yeah. uh, but you know, we're wearing this pair of glasses, and um, I, I, through which we through which we see the world. Uh, and you know, if we've got the this is an adoption issue glasses on then it becomes, it can become quite uh, disempowering. So I'm talking here from personal, personal experience. When, when I thought some stuff that I was going through was adoption specific, I thought it was some, that somehow made it more challenging to, to overcome. I was kind of, it was something I was stuck with. Whereas when I realized it was a, a human issue rather than an adoption issue, um, then it becomes com- somehow kind of more transient, um, less of an issue, uh, and easier to, and, and, you know, like um, a, a bag that's easier to put down rather than a, a baggage on the back, the rucksack that um, was uh, that I'm stuck with. So I'm just wondering if you can. I can can you share anything about, does that, does that make sense? Does I that think that's sense? almost exactly what I've uh, been talking about, that we've got to be careful we don't label everything as related to adoption, you know, because kids do kid stuff, you know, and not everything is related to their adoption. And have you had any, uh, have you had any um, personal moments of, of that, that, you know, when, when you've, you know, you've, something's happened and you've, and you've seen that? Um, that you would be up for, for sharing though? Not that I can recall straight off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah nothing, nothing. It's a long yeah. time ago, yeah. So you've talked about um, uh, a, 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 lifelong, a lifelong commitment of parents yeah. and, and, and you as an agency that shares that lifelong commitment. So yeah. it, it, it's pretty clear that you're a man of, um, you man of high moral fiber and 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 you know like a and a clear you've got a very clear sense of the world uh so how is that impact how does that impact your work do you think it's, it comes from a, i suppose a passion you know to to see um like a, a, the key thing is that people have reached their full potential that's the the key to have that opportunity you know that that's where yeah. that comes from yeah if, if okay. you had if you had your time again with your daughter would you do anything differently do you think that's hard to answer because you, yeah. you, you learn you're learning as you go you know so yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe, uh, maybe if i had um you know the, the support that we're offering now that might have helped in a lot of you know, instances. Yeah. There were a couple of moments where I had to reach out, you know, before the agency and had to reach out to try and get advice and it wasn't there, you know, to, to get help. Yeah. You know, or, or people gave um, uh, misleading advice and, you know, and that sort of thing. So uh, I'm quite careful to, um, you know, that our, uh, one of the key things for our social is make sure to keep the family together. There's some instances where people try and they think they can parent the children better than what the parents can, you know, and, and they think that's the solution. You know, they think it's separating the children from the parents for a while, and you know, we every every intent should be trying to keep the family together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So, so in a way, then you what you've done is you've you've taken what you've learned that was missing from your own that, that you know you created you you've created the agency that you wish you'd had in a certain way is it i mean is that, is that kind Acc- of accidentally yeah it wasn't accidentally. accidentally yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah. yeah accidentally 
Well, yeah, because, because when, when I set up the agency, I actually didn't know, you know, really, you know, there's been a big learning thing as well, you know, actually yeah. bringing in the experts, like you said, and they, they're teaching you all the time, you know, so, yeah. So it's been about being open, yeah. And I, I, I'm not sure whether I agree with the accidentally word. I, I would say that this is kind of like inspired. It's like an in, in inspired. Um, yeah. Gene. Well, I, I mean, you're not going. I'm, I'm sure you're a modest guy, so you're not going to take this. But you know, it seems to me like an inspired genius. You know, like we've got this idea that you know there's seven ways of doing this, and everything has to be like strategically thought out. But no, it seems to me it seems like that's that's what you've done. It's been a good accident. Yeah, we've, we've gone out. We've gone and we, we we do actually have a a mode of operation where we do look for best practice. So we're constantly looking for improving. You know, we we just we we never think we've arrived. We're always looking to improve, uh, learning from other people. You know, yeah, and that that's kind of helped. So we've actually grown as an agency. You know, over the years because of that, because of the the learning and mistakes you make, and you know, and yeah, becoming a bit bolder and some things that you believe in and you know and implementing them yeah yeah so are there are, are there any recent additions to the to the best practice that that you could share if if you felt that would be um uh, uh, useful to the listeners or, or is it all a bit too technical yeah it's uh we went through a really big best practice thing and now we're, we're just fine-tuning what we did you know so yeah, that's, we, we just, we've been really fine tuning our support plan, you know, so what that looks like. And um, we, we've got quite a detailed support plan that we offer to, to uh, parents. I think we, we've led the way in some things too. We've, uh, uh, one thing I can recall that's recent and um, I don't know of any other is, but we've got a, an app that people can uh, subscribe to and it's got all our resources on it. It's got videos that people can watch. It's got um, uh, books that they can order from our library. Uh, it's, um, th that's something that we, an initiative that we kind of brought in. Yeah. And is, so is that, that's, that's just for, for clients, yeah? That's not for the... No, no there's, there's certain levels that um, uh, there, there's a, a level where uh, people can see all the resources. When they become clients, then they can actually see families of ours that have adopted that talk, of, answer my questions about their experience and we don't kind of want to open them up to the whole world you know, because anyone in the world can download this app so yeah so it gets a, quite a bit more detailed you know when, when, it, when it gets into that it gets quite specific so what's what's the name of the app in people in case people want to download that so just called cfo which is short for compassion for orphans cfo resources app they can find it on our website so and they, they can download it onto their phone and look at yeah, that's great. Yeah, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, obviously a lot of people listening to podcasts are driving or like me walking the dog, walking the dog and driving. So I'll put a link into your to your website um, and um, and your social media content so people can can get in touch uh, with. Uh, so what, what I, we, especially uh, the app, I think would be a, a great uh, a great resource for people to, to look at. And also with our website, what we did is we. Um, uh, because we don't charge any fees for what we do, there's no financial gain for us to exchange information. So we make absolutely everything we can available on our website. The whole process, cost, cost eligibility criteria, every, everything is on. We, we don't want it to be a mystery for people about inter-country adoption. We want them to go in there and answer all the questions they might have. Yeah. So we, we've got really, we want to um, show them the whole picture from the beginning to the end, what it looks like. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So um, is there anything else you'd like to, to, sh to share as we wrap this up, Alfred? I'd like to say it's a wonderful thing. Adoption is a, an incredible thing to, to be involved in. And uh, if people are thinking about it, I just encourage them to explore it because it's, uh, in some ways, not many people do it, you know, inter-country adoption, really, relatively. You know, but it's it's such an amazing thing. Yeah, it is. Just to have a child that's not born to you, someone you know, a stranger, come into your life, you know, and share your life with you. It's a, it's an incredible experience. It's challenging, can be challenging, but if you if you're prepared, got the right supports in place, you know, then uh, you know, prepare for 
prepare well, um, just in case, you know, something like that. But if it doesn't, it's great as well. It's best, best to be prepared. So That's if great. people are thinking about it, you know, I think you look into it. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Sam, for coming on the show because I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye, Thank listeners. You. See you soon.